This is Rockin' with Jay, man, is with Pray for Sleep. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. How's it going? Good, man. Just enjoying life. How about you? About the same. Yeah, just got off uh, running a tour with some of the guys in a band called New Monarch. Been doing merch and stage tech in and stuff back home and settling back in, watching that, getting things going with our, our newest single release that we put out last week and kind of just, you know, rolling along. For those who are watching and unfamiliar with you, can you tell me all about yourself? <clears throat> yeah, um, so Pray for Sleep, we're a, a metal band from Columbus, Ohio. We've been been doing this whole thing together for about five years now. We put out a, a self-titled EP in 2017, um, started, started rocking shows after that, uh, put out a full album in 2020, um, a full 10 song called Behind Our Eyes. Um, and then we've just been working on, on writing and, and playing shows the past couple of years and are finally getting around to our first kind of new release cycle. Um, put out our first single in a while called Shade on uh, July 14th this year. Um, been getting back into the scene and getting back out to some shows. And you are known for your stance on um, mental uh, health. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mental and behavioral health um, awareness and sort of recognition is something that we've taken uh, kind of to be a big part of what we do as as a as a band. You know, we talk about it at, at shows. All of our lyrics come from sort of either personal experience or or, or um, shared experience with friends, just talking about things to do with you know our our dealings with uh, depression and anxiety and and similar mental health. Uh, diagnoses and things like that um and just things that things that have helped us you know things that we've felt and just trying to make sure that you know the people that hear the music and they hear the words um know that they're seen and and, and understood and that there's people out there that can help and that there's always hope so the new single shade just dropped yes it did we finally got to release in something put out a, a nice new music video and all of that fun stuff i actually got to do the um the single artwork was a piece that I did myself, which has been super cool to kind of attach my my stuff to the music on a, a um, different sort of artistic level. So, how has the reception been on this so far? Great, it's been it's been great. We've received a lot of really nice support from from old fans, um, people that we've known for a long time. Um, you know, being very supportive and encouraging about the new music, and have seen it. A decent reach with some new fans as well getting to getting to um, introduce ourselves to some some new people um talking with other you know bands and industry folks um uh, as well as just you know fans that we've gotten to meet at the couple of shows that we've played since it's out had a, a very very nice very encouraging reception for the song especially first time doing something in like three years it's nice to get some <laughs> some positive feedback from people tell me about the writing process on this single yeah so this single we've actually been working on um this one and uh, we, we wrote and recorded a couple over the fall of 2022 we went out to california to track them um we had been working on writing these songs since like summer of 2020 so they are songs that we've had kind of in the tank and brewing for for a long time um our, our process is a little scattered we're kind of you know we're still figuring out what the flow looks like for us as a group but um we've got to work with um ryan williams um uh, previously of red sun rising now of uh, new monarch um was helping us with some of the early production and, and things like that and then getting to work out in california with bob marlette um we had a, a decent amount of people in, involved in the whole process that made it a lot of fun um, made it i think we got Definitely, I would say the best product we've gotten of any of our our music so far. Um, but yeah, long long process for 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 a handful of songs there. And this is just a tease to what our beaks before full uh, album comes out, right? Yeah. So at the moment, we have a couple recorded and kind of lining up release uh, timelines and things like that. We're working on getting a few more written and recorded on hopes um, working towards a full album or at least sort of somewhere like a five song EP, but it's just a taste of what's coming. We got a couple more lined up and uh, new things on the way for sure. What influenced you? Um, I think, I mean, as far as lyrics go, like I said, personal stories, stories of friends, um, hearing just, you know, 
um, experiences that people have dealt with have been a huge inspiration as far as the writing process goes. Musically, um, I think personally, um, bands like Silent Planet um, and Beartooth are a couple of the stands out just as, um, excuse me, as far as musical inspiration, just people that we've looked up to in the scene, um, whether it be for their their lyricism or the the, the riffs and the, the guitar tones or um, the way that the drummer, you know, falls under um, into the whole rhythm of everything. Um, we're a little a little scattered um, when when the whole band's together, the, the range of things that we listen to is kind of all over the place. There's not a, you know, a set two or three things that we listen to that I would say inspire us, but we try to pull inspiration from kind of everything that we interact with. What is the craziest thing you remember about the lockdown? Um, I think craziest thing with the lockdown was trying to figure out how to continue to interact as a group. I mean, we're a, a band of, at the time, three, now four people. I mean, we all live separately. So trying to figure out ways that we could practice or um, kind of try to keep the band rolling and, and functioning um, in a time where we couldn't really get together in a, in a specific place was it took some adjusting. We eventually got into some of the sort of like live stream sets and doing shows that way for a little bit. Um, but I think early on the whole thing of trying to figure out how can we actually communicate consistently with as a group and, and make sure that we're still kind of trying to make this this whole band thing happen was a pretty pretty harsh adjustment adjustment to have to make there. What do you think about AI? AI, uh, I think it's it's fascinating. I think there are some sometimes where it's used probably in a way that I don't think is the most creative. I think some people maybe overcredit it as far as the creativity of the whole thing. But there, are, I have seen some very fascinating things. I think it's a lot of fun to mess with sometimes. I've seen, you know, goofy stuff like people using AI to recreate songs with cartoon characters' voices, like spongebob screaming a knock loose song is a pretty amusing little video bit to watch um but i think some of it some of it's very fascinating some of it as a as a creative as an artist um is a, a little you know off-putting just the, um but i think there's always been things like that um whether you know on different levels but i think i think it's a fascinating tool as long as people are using it in a in a creative and constructive way what do you think about ticket prices getting super high for a lot of bands? Ticket prices? I think it's it's something that we we as a band try to avoid. I totally understand, you know, in a time where people are trying to, you know, understanding the logistical side of it, trying to make, make a profit from doing something that you love. It sometimes can be difficult to do that without having, you know, some higher ticket prices. Um, I think you know, especially with some of the online ticketing fees and things like that, it can get a little bit out of hand pretty quick. But I mean, I, I recognize a lot of that is just bands trying to make ends meet. You know, it's an expensive business to be in um, and it's it's getting harder and harder for artists to support themselves with, you know, all of the, the different facets involved in putting on a show because there's, you know, there's a lot of cost involved with renting a venue and people to run sound and lights and keep the bars open and all the other stuff that is kind of attached to that um it's it's a lot to pay for so i think I, I totally understand there's there's sometimes there is a need for a slightly higher cost to kind of offset what's the best venue you've ever played um ooh. we have a couple venues here in columbus ohio that i'm a really big fan of um there's the basement run by promo west is one of my personal favorites it's a nice like 250 300 cap room um it's a nice kind of smaller venue real intimate space everybody's right there um i think it's and the, the crew that works there is all amazing super nice friendly people um i think probably the coolest stage we played we did we got the chance to play rock on the range um in 2018 right before they changed the name to sonic temple and you know getting a festival experience is definitely one of the the cooler kind of stage experiences we've had but as far as consistent venues go i would probably say personally the basement here in columbus is, is my favorite that we've played what's your worst worst uh ooh. well <laughs> we uh, over the pandemic we actually played we rented a flatbed truck and set up all of our equipment 
on the back of a like flatbed towing truck um and just logistically i think that was one of the more difficult uh things that we've done um you know very tight packed very bumpy rides a little little concerning trying to drive down the street we uh, set up in front of a couple people's neighborhood parties and things like that and and played with some friends we had a good time but definitely probably the sketchiest quote-unquote stage that we've <laughs> spent time on ever have a crazy interaction with a fan um not particularly i mean we've had you know we have a couple of, of fans that have really just become friends over the years they've come to lots of shows here locally and we see them at shows when we go to see other bands or run into them at festivals and you know just getting to hang out and get to know people um haven't had anything super crazy i think one of the the coolest most unique ones we had one of our first headline shows we actually had um one of the photographers that was at the show shooting the show for us brought her daughter and it was i believe it was her birthday and we brought her up on stage and she she crowd surfed she was like i think 10 years old so getting getting the chance to kind of invite a kid up to to stand on a stage and have some fun and get to crowd surf was pretty pretty unique but what is your favorite memory from playing a show? Um, I think my favorite memory from a show is, let's see, our last headliner show that we did here in Columbus. Um, standing on the stage, singing one of our songs and getting to see kind of a room full of people singing the words back um, as, as, a, as an artist and, and a writer. Um, seeing other people kind of know the words and, and sing the song and, and see that it kind of means something to them is probably the coolest experience I think that I've had uh, in the band so far. What is your worst? Worst? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I think there's been a show or two where I kind of, you know, screamed my voice out and ended up the last song or two were pretty pretty rough uh, so those are those are never great experiences but you know it's, it's something that it happens as an artist but um I think overall I'm, I've got way more good experiences than bad when it comes to to performances I don't have any like terrible catastrophic failures in the catalog yet I'm sure those will happen and I you know dread <laughs> dread their coming but um yeah um, nothing off the top of my head really what is next for you? Um, next, I know we're working on putting together a, a little string of shows here towards the start of the fall. We're trying to get um, some local and sort of regional shows, looking to probably try to do five or six shows in a week here, get to a couple of the cities around the central Ohio area here, spreading out to the neighboring states. Uh, beyond that, working on writing and releasing new music. You got a couple lined up and a uh, few more to kind of finish up and get polished and then working towards trying to find some some more tours more recording time and working towards you know full album and a tour to support it hopefully sometime in the next year or so how do my followers follow you um we are on all the social medias you know uh, pray for sleep band um, and all of the links are on our website prayforsleep.com it's the easiest way to kind of find all of that stuff it's got information about what we're up to you can sign up for our email list to get updates from us links to all of our social medias ways to get in contact with us and booking information all that stuff is going to be there on our website you guys have any cool merch yeah we have actually quite a bit of merch we've we've uh, found out we've partnered with a decent decent pr printing service we've got you know, new stuff for new songs just came out. Brand new T-shirt. Um, we got some some fun hoodies. We got like sweatpants. I think we have a fanny pack. Like, there's all kinds of fun stuff on there. I think we have a pillowcase too, which is one of my favorite, just kind of weird one-offs that we did. Um, but yeah, that's also on our website. Um, links to all of that there. Bro, you know you gotta hook up your boy with some fresh gear, bro. School's coming up soon, bro. It's only two more months, bro. Then I'm school. Shoot us a message. We'll 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 get you some some discount codes, some some special some special merch for you. Appreciate <laughs> it, bro. So fun question time. You're on death row, and it's time for a final meal. What's on the menu? Hmm, death row final meal. I'm thinking 
I probably just want a cheeseburger, dude. I really, I'm a big fan of cheeseburgers. If I could, a nice, big, juicy cheeseburger, I'd probably, probably just be my go-to. I'm a, I'm a simple man, simple taste. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. I'm not a huge, not a huge foodie. There's a couple, oh, maybe, you know, there's a couple of Mexican restaurants around here that have some really good, like, quesadilla fajitas, fried veggies, and like, just, like, a stupid amount of cheese sauce. Maybe that'd be the way to go. <laughs> okay, so it's death row, and time is over. How are you going out? Ooh, uh, guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> I- I've never heard that before. Really? Oh no, it's it's historically the uh, most quote unquote humane form of uh, execution because it's just fast from what I've seen. I don't know. It was the first thing that popped into my head. Fun fact, in France, they were still doing guillotine executions. The first until... Star Wars movie came yeah, out, right? Yeah, you heard about yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> so if you could have any superpower, what would you choose? My my go to choice has always been shape shifting because I feel like that's a, kind of a cheat to get whatever you want if you can use it properly. True, well, you could be like you could be like Elon Musk for one day and get all that money. Yeah, or I can just you know if I need to be a little bit stronger or I want to you know have wings and fly or be smaller or bigger or I mean the possibilities, man. They're so, crazy, endless. Endless. <laughs> Okay, let's say you could choose any song ever written by any band and you can change that song where you were the one who wrote it and was your song. What song would it be and why? Mm. Mm. God, there's so many songs. Mm. (laughs) I mean... I feel like an easy answer is to pick something off of like Semp Eternal by bringing me the horizon and just be like, well, let me be the biggest metal band in the world. I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, I think more, more recently, my personal choice would be there's a trilogy by Silent Planet is, in my opinion, one of the coolest, most just like unique metal songs out there. Um, and so to be able to say I had a hand in something that's that kind of unique and exciting would be one of the ones I would pick, I think. I'm sure the rest of the guys in the band would have some very different answers, but. All right, man. Thank you for being on my show. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And the next time we meet is at the backstage on one of your shows. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Have a nice one. Thank you very much.